a restaurant like this, you told a story about someone from Abdura, you were guaranteed a laugh. It was, in a way, the Brooklyn of its time. For Democritus, all of life was to be enjoyed and understood. In fact, for him, understanding and enjoyment were pretty much the same thing. He said, a life without festivity is a long road without an inn. Democritus may have come from Abdera, but he was no dummy. Democritus understood that the complex forms, changes, and motions of the material world all derive from the interaction of very simple moving parts. He called these parts atoms. All material objects are collections of atoms intricately assembled, even we. When I cut this apple, the knife must be passing through empty spaces between the atoms, Democritus argued. If there were no such empty spaces, no void, then the knife would encounter some impenetrable atom, and the apple wouldn't be cut. Let's compare the cross-sections of the two pieces. Are the exposed areas exactly equal? No, said Democritus. The curvature of the apple forces this slice to be slightly shorter than the rest of the apple. If they were equally tall, then we'd have a um, cylinder and not an apple. No matter how sharp the knife, these two pieces have unequal cross-sections. But why? Because on the scale of the very small, matter exhibits some irreducible roughness. And this fine scale of roughness, Democritus of Abdera identified with the world of the atoms. His arguments are not those we use today, but they're elegant and subtle and derived from everyday experience. And his conclusions were fundamentally right. Democritus believed that nothing happens at random, that everything has a material cause. He said, I would rather understand one cause than be king of Persia. He believed that poverty in a democracy was far better than wealth in a tyranny. He believed that the prevailing religions of his time were evil and that neither souls nor immortal gods existed. There is no evidence that Democritus was persecuted for his beliefs. But then again, he came from Abdera. However, in his time, the brief tradition of tolerance for unconventional views was beginning to erode. For instance, the prevailing belief was that the moon and the sun were gods. Another contemporary of Democritus named Anaxagoras taught that the moon was a place made of ordinary matter and that the sun was a red-hot stone far away in the sky. For this, Anaxagoras was condemned, convicted, and imprisoned for impiety, a religious crime. People began to be persecuted for their ideas. A portrait of Democritus is now on the Greek hundred drachma note. But his ideas were suppressed and his influence on history made minor. The mystics were beginning to win.